Thank you very much. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا مولانا محمد نبي الأمي الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين. Honorable Sirigman Mwambake, Honorable Minister Madam Tohnangwere Ngai, Ndoi, sorry. Your Excellencies, Ambassadors and Consul General, Distinguished Religious Leaders and Imam, Distinguished Guests. My first words will be words of praise to God Almighty in profound gratitude for the honor bestowed upon me sitting at this podium as a speaker. The invitation to deliver an address on such an occasion and before such an audience is a blessing for which I thank from the bottom of my heart Sirin Mammor Mbake and the Murid Islamic community in America. I know that I owe this honor solely to the Sirin's generosity and to the welcoming friendship that has always been extended to me by Mika, by Imam Bashir Lo, by Imam Dabo, ever since I've had the pleasure of meeting them. Not to forget, of course, my very good friend that I thank for his generous introduction. And my only reason for accepting the daunting task of giving a speech on this day is that I could not possibly decline an invitation which more than anything else <coughs> expresses the generosity, the leniency, and the trust of such leaders. Distinguished guests, the topic of this presentation has been suggested by the Murid Islamic community in America, as this organization tirelessly insists, following the teachings of Sheikh Ahmadu Bamba, on the necessity of unity in the Islamic world, and indeed, and the Sirin has mentioned it again, the word in general. A topic such as this one could not be more appropriate for the very location of this conference here in the headquarters of an organization dedicated to building peace and unity among nations and to giving its full meaning to the notion of an international community. A topic could not be more appropriate to the celebration of a man like the Sheikh Ahmed Bamba Mbake and the path to which he gave the name of Muridia, a Sufi order born in the context of colonial domination and successfully opposed to it the power of nonviolence. To celebrate a man who in great devotion and love for the prophet of Islam cherished one single title from himself, that of Khadim Rasul, the servant of the messenger, is not just about remembering a life and works that are important for the history of Islam in Senegal, in Africa, and in the world. It also, I should say it primarily, means meditating his teachings, understanding fully how topical they are now, and finding in them a viaticum for today and for tomorrow, which is to say, in our age and in the context of globalization in which we are living. Let me first examine the meaning of that somewhat overused notion of globalization. French poet and thinker, Paul Valéry, may have given the shortest and best definition of globalization when he wrote, as early as 1931, now the era of the finite word is beginning. Now the era of the finite word is beginning. That famous utterance was somehow presaging what we now call globalization, an era in which barriers to international trade financial flows and exchanges of all sorts of material and immaterial goods are being erased as national economies are more and more integrated into one single global economy. Cultures, religions, and different belief systems 
are in closer contact with one another than ever before as migrations are continuously shaping and reshaping our societies, making multiculturalism on different continents the norm rather than the exception. But as we all know, that also means the emergence of a world in which communities are confronted as never before with what I will call the challenge of difference. In our globalized world, difference no longer presents itself as the existence of some distant community living in a land of its own with more customs and religions that I can tolerate because I see them from afar, essentially because they do not really matter to me in my very daily life. That is not the case anymore in the world in which we live. Now, when we speak of difference, we speak of our very immediate neighbor. Thus, and I will focus here on the Muslim religion and cultures, what we call the West, referring to Europe and North America, has discovered that it has become also a land of Islam. Since the last few decades following the first wave of Muslim immigration in the 1950s and 1960s, relatively little attention was back then paid to the phenomenon, primarily because the new immigrants were not supposed to stay. Then because a very good and even soaring economy worked well at that time as a force of integration of the foreign workers. And finally, because religion was not, as it is now, such an important factor when dealing with immigration. Everything changed when it became obvious that they were here to stay and that their different ways of life or worship were now to become part of who we are as a nation. The questions posed today about multiculturalism in Europe or about what European identity means, and the case of France posing the question of its national identity against what some present as the failure of multiculturalism is well known, all these are expressions of what I have called the challenge of difference that region of the world which is Europe and North America is facing today. In a parallel fashion, the traditionally Muslim societies, a phrase that means societies with Muslim majorities or very important minorities, discovered that the traditional categories making a distinction between the lands of Islam and the non-Muslim lands, the traditional distinction between Dar al-Islam or Dar al-Haram, had lost its meaning. Islam is at home now in the West as it is in the East or the South, if we still insist on using those designations. And that is not just a matter of demographics. By becoming a global religion, in addition to being a universal religion, by migrating from South Asia, Middle Eastern or African lands, to the regions of Europe or America, Islam found itself confronted with the challenge of adapting to new contexts, new cultures, new demands. The necessity of rethinking itself, of reinterpreting its jurisprudence, of redefining the modes of transmission of Islamic knowledge and values to the new generations, is thus generating changes that are going to have an impact on the traditional Muslim homelands as well. To such a challenge, the alternatives are either rejection or embrace. The first option is the often violent rejection of difference that we see coming from both sides. 